I want to introduce the next round of speakers. And the first one is George Imaphodon. George is the CEO of Motives, a performance engineer with Sir Lewis Hamilton's racing team, X44, and a board member at the Co-op Foundation and the Hamilton Commission, improving diversity in STEM and motorsport. Let's make some noise for George Imaphodon. Okay, good afternoon. We're gonna go again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I need some energy. I can't work without energy. This is gonna be me and you interacting throughout this whole time, unless I'll get bored as well. Um, so as George mentioned, I'm a performance engineer with Lewis Hamilton's race team, X44 and a CEO of, CEO of an organization called Motives. Um, but before we start, I want to just go through this, if it works for me. Yeah, OK, cool. Brilliant. So these companies on the screen, what kind of brings them together? What ties them together? What is the common thing? Just, and this is for guesses. No one needs to like know the answer. Any guess? Go for it. Engineering, yeah, some of them for sure, yeah. At the back. Tech, yeah, there'll be a bit of that. Human interaction, yeah, for sure, all of them have to. Oh, you're getting close. So yeah, it is close to motives. It has something to do with motives. It's like related to something in the room. One more person probably. Does anyone want to go for it? It's a guess, you don't have to know the answer. Okay, cool. Put you out of your misery. So most of the Motives team, well, all of them actually, have worked at these organizations. I've probably worked at half of them. Um, but that is not the point I'm trying to make today. The main thing I'm actually trying to talk about is an area that I love. I come from one of the best places in London. Can anyone guess? South. How do you know I'm from South? You can see from my aura, isn't it? Is there something around my aura? Okay, cool. Where in South? Southeast. Ah, so, these, these, these people are good. Where in Southeast? Please don't say Lucian again unless you're cancelled. Please. Not Lucian. Not Lucian. Not Lucian. Where in South London? Where in Southeast? Someone said Peckham. I love that. So I grew up in one of the best places in London, Peckham. Um, and when I was growing up, to be fair, I grew up with my older brother, Kenny, um, and my mum, who was a single parent at the time when we were growing up. And for me, I was surrounded by all the vices that you can imagine. Drug abuse, alcohol abuse, you've seen it all. Um, and when I was 14, my brother was falsely imprisoned for murder and six other charges. And he was in Feltham Youth Prison, essentially. It's a, a youth offenders institution. Has anyone heard of Feltham before? Show of hands. So yeah, a few people have heard of Feltham. Um, so he was there, so I would go there every other kind of weekend every other Saturday I would go me my mum stepdad at the time um, and for me just kind of looking at that environment I'm like something has to change my mum didn't come from Nigeria to the UK for like no reason surely if he's going to be in there hopefully he comes out but regardless I'm going to be the one to try and make sure anywhere I go I leave it better than I found it in some way so that was kind of like my vision from that point so I was in probably year nine at the time um, just about to study some GCSEs in fact I did some early GCSEs um, and trust me the grades weren't making sense um, I remember getting like a G in RE I don't even know if that exists um, and it wasn't great um, and I did maths as well I got a D in that um, but I said look I need to take this serious I need to focus so at that point I literally just said I've made a decision, and I also heard from my brother's girlfriend at the time of something called a scholarship. Has anyone heard of a scholarship before? Yeah, a few people. Um, so basically, for anyone that hasn't heard of a scholarship, they essentially said, we're going to give you 36K or whatever it was, um, and you can go off to university. And I was like, no one's got 36K to give me, so I think I'm going to do it. Um, and I'm just going to focus on that, and that's going to be my number one focus and goal. So I think you always need to have a goal, and I had an outcome that I wanted to achieve, because nobody else in my friendship group was going to university. 
by the time I left school, most of my friends had been excluded. Um, eventually that's a pipeline to prison often. So there wasn't many different options that I saw. So it was literally me on my one saying, you know, I grew up fixing bikes in Peckham for my friends and I'm gonna try and take this a little bit further. Um, so from kind of that point, and after seeing all the injustice, we set up this organization called Motives to essentially based upon the question, what's the motive? It's not like rocket science. And then we just wanted to give people things to do that were outside of entertainment that allowed them to explore their different interests. So that was like events this week, next week and upcoming, whether it was arts, business, entrepreneurship, tech, you name it. We were kind of amalgamating all of these events in one and delivering it to them on a weekly basis. And a few thousand people would essentially go on that app each time and get an opportunity to find things that were interesting. And then we soon realized that some people still felt uncomfortable being in those environments. For me, the reason why I felt a bit more comfortable because I joined organizations such as the Amos Bursary, and they essentially provided me with coaching and normalized success so that I could come and do all of this with confidence. But a lot of people didn't have that. So we realized how can we essentially create something where it's accelerating that process at scale. Um, and then we started doing programs to actually support them with that. So grassroots programs for kids in school to inspire them to go into STEM and also employability programs to actually ensure that once they have got all of this inspiration, they can actually find a pathway into the career that they're trying to go down. And I think I've got a video on the next slide of one of our grassroots programs. And Sibera is here today. She's our program manager at Motives. Give her a round of applause, please. I'm going to embarrass you, as I should. Um, so she set up this amazing program called Prosper in Peckham. PLV. Kids get a McLaren supercar in Peckham. And the kids absolutely loved it. Um, so we ran a program that essentially exposed them to STEM, um, showed them what a lot of people show them in the hood, but it's often in a negative context. And they show it's not essentially through hard work as such, it's through a kind of different route. I'm not saying that work is hard, it's pretty hard still. Um, but it's a different pathway, right? So we kind of wanted to show them there's another way to achieve the same goal. Wherever you build this, you buy it. I don't care, I just want you to know that this is within reach if you want it. Um, so we kind of had a program for a few months at Harris Academy at Peckham to inspire them to do that. Um, and then kind of through all of these achievements, we kind of managed to meet amazing people. Um, and then for me, I was always interested in engineering. Um, so I took part in Formula Student. Has anyone heard of Formula Student? Got one show of hand, two hands, three hands. Oh, I'm trying to... Anyone interested in motorsport, in terms of getting into motorsport? Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so essentially anyone that wants to get into motorsport, formula student is your pathway. So when you're in university, um, so for me, I went to UCL to study mechanical engineering and programming. I was rejected from Cambridge, uh, rejected from Imperial. UCL said yes, I'm happy for them. Um, and then essentially I joined the formula student team. And funnily enough, when I was in my third year, after kind of supporting them, building devices, I was rejected from doing it. So I joined in my first year, being proactive, everything that you mentioned, going for it, building things for them. And in third year, I got rejected. And that's because I wasn't fixing classic cars or anything like that. It was very, I was fixing bikes, you know what I mean? And then I was go-karting as well, but that got closed down in Burgess Park. So there wasn't too much exposure that I had to these kind of different opportunities. Um, but I said, you know what, I'm still gonna go for it. Um, and I'm still gonna try and create different things. So what I did was, redesigned the component at Rolls Royce. I took an internship uh, in my second year, redesigned the component um, for Rolls Royce, um, improved the efficiency on it by 40%. This component hadn't been touched for around 30 years because it wasn't a sexy component. And then that saved them quite a bit of money. Can anyone guess at the back? How much? 800 million. Okay, cool. Let's go a bit down. Let's go a bit down. Let's go a bit down. Let's go Anyone else? It's less than that, go on. 20, Not 20,000, a bit high. It's in the millions. 4.5, no higher than that. 50, bang on, who said 50? Amazing, amazing. You got good guessing skills. Um, so essentially I did that. And then the, the irony for me was that at the end of my third year, I did a dissertation with them and that was part of it. And then I won the best project award and best dissertation. So it's like, 
I'm so happy I didn't get accepted onto Formula Student because that rejection was literally a redirection to me being able to achieve that. It wouldn't have been possible in Formula Student because there's not too many things you can configure. Um, and then from that, I eventually graduated just in March um, with a first class in the Masters in Engineering. And then as soon as I graduated, I got this email from a guy called Lewis Hamilton. Anybody know him? Cool. Um, so he messaged me or emailed me and I thought it was spam because so I was just reading through it. Then I saw an attachment. It said my name. It said motives. I was like, okay, cool. Maybe this is real. Um, and then he essentially invited me to join the board of the Hamilton Commission. And because motives, we had been improving representation in STEM for years already since 2015. It was a natural fit for me. It made a lot of sense. So I said, cool, I'm going to do this. And my brothers always said, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. What does that mean? That means someone else is going to make the decisions for you if you're not there, if there's no representation there. So representation is key. You're going to have to advocate for something in life. You can't just stand on the sidelines. So I said, I'm going to join that and ensure that we can make a change in the STEM space and in motorsport. And then eventually I realized he was setting up this race team called Team X44 and he wanted a diverse team of mechanics and engineers. So I said, look, you know what? I can help you do that. We've been doing that at Motives as well. And eventually he said, why don't you put your CV in there as well? I was like, mate, I kind of already gave up on those dreams of motorsport. I gave up on those dreams of motorsport though because I got rejected. So I said, I'm just going to keep doing my own projects and live my life. You know what I mean? And then eventually they were like, well, you probably have the best CV here. So you should just go for it, right? So and then I went for it, went to preseason testing in Spain and I absolutely loved it. And I was like, cool, my dreams are reignited yet again. Um, and let's just keep pushing and see what happens. And now I'm probably in my second season um, within motorsport. And then this was a video that they recently just did. Um, I'm George Mafedon and I work on it. Motorsport. And I mean, this is engineering ambassador for Royal Academy of Engineering. I think you can turn it up. That's what drove me to study engineering Thank at you, CSE. Now, I work with Sir Lewis Hamilton's X44 racing team as a performance engineer. Sustainability is actually at the heart of it, and it's about improving that technology. Shape a better future. Choose engineering. They did something weird in my voice there. It's not me, for sure. Um, but essentially, being able to work with him has been a dream. I've even got like a... A little Instagram post, I think in like 2018, like, Lewis, I'm coming for you. It was when I was carting or something like that. Um, so like, this has been a dream, but I kind of just let it go because I thought, look, I don't know when it's going to come. But I still kept on being proactive and being, you know, taking initiative. Um, and then from there, I recently, just last month, won the Young Engineer of the Year by the Royal Academy of Engineering. Um, <laughs> So, so for me, I think the reason why this is crazy is because every single person that has won this is a doctor or so. I was like, mate, I'm not a doctor. I'm not looking to do a PhD anytime soon. Like the master's was hard enough. Um, like I'm just going to keep on pushing and doing my thing. And if the recognition comes, great. But I wasn't aiming for it. So it's often sometimes you're not chasing something, but you get it when you just put your head down and just try and make sure you actually impact people's lives or try and make a difference. For me, I've always seen myself as a humanitarian engineer, which is about people and planet. Like, how can I leave everywhere better than I essentially found it? Um, and then after this, I got a big surprise at the event. Sabera has seen this, but I'm guessing all of you haven't. Um, and yeah, it took me back for sure. Congratulations on receiving the Sir George McFarland Medal for excellence in the field of engineering. This is an incredible achievement, and it's so well deserved. I've seen firsthand how passionate and talented you are, and I'm grateful for all the support for the Hamilton Commission, and I'm so proud to be able to call you a friend and part of the Expo 14. We both know the importance of having diverse role models within engineering, and I just want to congratulate you on all the incredible work you're doing with Remotives, which is doing incredible things for the next generation of diverse talent. I hope that unrepresented young people will look at your journey and see how exciting a career in STEM can be. And generally, I can't wait to see what you do in your future and what you achieve. But for now, enjoy this moment and have an incredible evening. Congratulations, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was not, I was not expecting that at all. Um, and there's a little funny part in the end, so I'll let it play until the end.
But I think this moment was super special because it's like, there's nothing that you can't really do. And despite the environment that you come from, you think that's a limitation, but it's not. So I think that was Cliver. So he presents like some different things on, on TV. And he was like, not bad. I was like, yeah, not bad as well. Um, and I had an amazing time with my brother and my friend. He was an accountability partner. And accountability is also very important because it allows you to keep going, especially at times when you don't want to keep going. Essentially, there's been many times. I graduated in 2020. Like, I finished my course in 2020 anyway. And Mate, I did not want to finish that course. Like, I could not be asked to do it in the midst of COVID. Um, but somehow the accountability partner just allowed me to be hyper-focused on what I needed to do. And we managed to come out with it in the end. Um, so I just want to leave you with three things so I can be a bit practical. Um, so often, when I think about the motives mindset, that's what we call it. What does that often mean? It often means starting with the end in mind. Like, know what you want. Because if you don't, it's, someone's going to tell you what you want and you're just going to accept it and keep on going through. Um, so if it's that job or internship, just say what that is. Um, specify your lack. So where are the gaps within your kind of knowledge? What do you need? What do you currently have already? Um, what don't you have? Um, and then specify the next steps for closing the gap. Um, and that's often like, how can you essentially build a staircase to get to the level that you want to be at? Because it's not going to be some one big slope, like, well, you'll fall down anyway. Um, but people think they can just do that. It's not going to work. It's going to be step after step. Um, and that's what I've definitely had to do for numerous internships, numerous opportunities, numerous failures. Um, yeah. So take a picture, take some notes on that. I think that's super important. I'm happy to answer some questions about that after. Um, and yeah, people say I look like Heady once, so I thought I'd put a quick picture, um, just to get that out of the way. Um, and he's got a good quote, good quote in the song, I was obsessed with money, now I'm obsessed with the progress. Just focus on the progress, focus on taking it step by step, not this end big goal, because if you build this castle in your head, it's very likely you're gonna overwhelm yourself and not gonna achieve what you want to achieve. So that will be me, that's my time. Thank you so much, um, and stay in touch.